What's up there, folks? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little while. There's been a few things preventing me from making another video. Uh, the main reason I moved all the way to Oklahoma, a little area just south of Tulsa called Broken Arrow. Um, I've been making all my other videos from where I was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas. My wife got a new job, so we moved on out, packed everything up, loaded it in a 26-foot U-Haul, drove that sucker out here, and it happened to be while all this coronavirus stuff is going on. So all my sessions have been limited. I haven't been making anything uh, new for content, so it's just kind of been dragging. So I got my computer set up. We're partially moved in. Everything's still in boxes. Looks like the damn house has a virus, but we'll get that taken care of shortly. But I wanted to go ahead and bring this content out. It's uh, my last session I did in San Antonio. I just got all my footage recorded and didn't get to put anything together for y'all, so here it is. I had a model who I'd worked with previously a few different times. We've always had great results, and she's really rather awesome. Uh, I feel like I don't even have to give her any direction. She does everything on point, and it just seems to be fire every time we get together and work on a new video. She gave me an idea, sent me an example of some what I've kind of referred to as like beauty or fashion type headshots. Really uh, well makeup done, hair's done nice, accessories, up tight and close headshots. So for these headshots, I was able to knock it out using four lights and a reflector, five lights if you want to add in one for the backdrop where you put different gels on for different looks. For this shot, I used my Sony a7 III and I used the 70 to 200 millimeter F4 version, the uh, Sony full frame, much lighter version than the 2.8 G Master. It's almost on par. I would say looking at the results without really, really zooming in, maybe like 3 to 1 and pixel peeping the hell out of it, it's just as sharp as the G Master. I went with this one, which I probably talked about in another video because of how much lighter it is. There's not many instances where I necessarily need that 2.8. Uh, in those situations, it's been maybe two or three since I bought it. I just go ahead and pay the money, rent the lens for real dark areas, maybe receptions on certain weddings or conferences, things where it's speakers and it's dark lighting where they want candids uh, of the people, the attendees and all that, but it's few and far in between where I really need it. And if I'm shooting low apertures as 2.8, I'm not really gonna use this focal length either. I have the 85 1.4 G Master and I've had the 50 1.8 and I've got my Tamron 28 to 75 if I also wanna get something in low light to use wider angles. But the 85 1.4 pretty much knocks out almost all of my headshot sessions or portraits. So a few specs about this lens here. It's got nine rounded aperture blades on it. It's almost half the weight of the G Master. It's got a focusing distance, I believe, of like four feet, which almost never would you need that distance. I was able to accomplish that in my home studio. It's basically a, a small garage converted into a living room that I set up and I was able to get far enough away with my light set up and my computer table with all my monitors and everything in there. So I'll go over my light setup just a little bit. You'll be able to see in the video soon after I'm done talking and boring y'all how I got everything done, but I'll give you just a little bit of info, a little bit of details. For my main light, I had overhead coming down. My Flashpoint Explorer 600 I purchased from Adorama. I'll have a link down below that y'all can check that out afterwards. It was in, I believe, a 36 inch Octobox with a with double diffused, I believe, with a grid on it. And it was on the Flashpoint C stand, boomed up above and brought down pretty close. And I had just a simple silver reflector underneath to help almost like the uh, clamshell lighting to fill in the shadows. I used to use a speed light with the mag sphere put under there, but the silver side of the reflector for this kind of beauty look we were going for was able to punch enough light in there and really highlight the makeup and stuff that was going on. For my rim lighting or hair lighting, I had one, I believe it was an AD200 in a seven inch reflector dish with a grid boomed up above coming down towards the back of the head. And I had a little bit of side lighting coming in. These were two Godox TT685 speed lights in strip boxes with a diffusion panel and the egg crate grid. They were back into the sides coming in. You'll be able to see highlights on each side of the face as those are shooting in there. And it was able to kind of carve out the shoulders in the side of the head. For the backlight, I had a Godox V1. And the reason I used the V1 for the backlight is because I had the round head. So I was able to get a perfect gradient going 
no matter what angle I put it on. I didn't have the rectangular shape. It came with the accessories kit that I purchased. So you had the diffuser cap, you can put different gels on and provide many different looks with it. So with all this set up, I was able to punch in really tight and even shooting, I believe it was like 6.3, maybe F9, I'll have to look it up again. Maybe I'll put the, some of the specs in the video, but being that close to my subject, zooming in over at least over hundred millimeters, I tried to get closer to the 200 if I could, but sometimes that was just a little bit too tight, but it has a nice fall off for the background too. You'll see there's a little bit of fall off between the eyes and the back of the head, which is totally acceptable for me. I'm not trying to paint absolutely everything perfectly in focus. And I wanted some slight fall off between the subject and the background. So overall, I'm super happy with the results. Most of the editing I did was uh, in Lightroom just to get my temperature and contrast settings pretty well done. I did some photos, a little bit of retouching in the Portrait Pro and in Photoshop, I did some skin retouching if there were some blemishes or something I needed to smooth out, uh, but it didn't take too long for each photo. All in all, you'll see the results for yourself. I'm pretty thrilled with it. It was my first shoot like this. Uh, the client likes the photos. I'm hoping maybe we can get some published soon. Um, I really, really am more interested in doing more shots like this. I think I really enjoyed doing this much more than your normal corporate headshot session. And I look forward to knocking out more in the future. So I'm going to continue to get set up here at home. I'm going to unpack everything, try to get a new client base, get some more YouTube content coming. Uh, with this coronavirus going on, we're all kind of stuck at home. Nothing's really happening. Maybe I'll pump out a product video or if I get a chance to look up some new areas around here, maybe get a landscape shot catch a shot of the stars, the cosmos, whatever. I'll, I'll do whatever I can to get another video coming out. So I'm going to list affiliate links for Adorama uh, down below of all of my gear. Feel free to check it out. If you purchase anything, it'll help me come along producing anything else for y'all. If you have any questions, any comments uh, whatsoever, feel free, drop them down below. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you're notified anytime I got something new coming out and give me any ideas on what you'd like to see. I'm more than happy to give it a shot. So thanks for always tuning in. I'm starting a new venture here in Oklahoma. I hope everybody likes what's coming in the future and stay tuned for what's coming soon. Some closure, yeah, I can finally start on.